that's all right. There's light at the end of the tunnel. Um, this weekend it's supposed to start warming up. The sun is going to shine. So it's all good. Um, right now we had a question from a couple um, from Tobaccoville, North Carolina. Uh, so Anna and Mark Anders, this is for you. Uh, there were a couple questions they have about the propagation station in the lettuce house. So um, we're going to go ask Mr. Wayne, the pro, about these uh, questions. So let's get right to it and uh, we will answer those for you. All right, so here we are and Wayne is going to uh, explain. Good morning, everybody. Patty wants me to explain some of this process we go through here because we have had probably half a dozen calls, phone calls this week, not just messages. You know, anywhere from Kentucky, New York, Tennessee, Texas, Utah, Colorado, Timmins, and Ottawa. <laughs> I mean, people, and it's great. We'd like to help everybody, but we just thought if we do a video, because a lot of them are a common problem. And it seems like everyone's having the problem of germination and from seed into the finishing tray. So we're going to go through it all one little step at a time, and that way if you have any questions, shoot us off a message and we'll get back to you. But anyways, here's the product we use. This is called Oasis. It comes in a case of a 20 sheets. We have a case a week sent to us automatically from our supplier. We go through about a, almost a case a month, depending on the crops we're growing. So you can see this is the, the one we use. They're one inch squares of Oasis. I'm just gonna show them a close up here. And, and there's the number. If you, if you want the number, it's 5231. They're one inch square, and there's 276 squares per sheet. So it works out well. These fit in a standard nursery tray, and I say they work out to about $5 a sheet. So it's quite reasonable. So one of the biggest problems people are having are poor germination in the tray once they've seeded it. And you know, I've had the same problem, and I still have, and I'm going to show you a problem I just recently had. So we've got a sheet here, as you can see it fits. And what I do, I will soak this tray. I will actually fill it right up so it's full. Now these trays are pH neutral, so you don't have to do too much other than soak it down. And where do you get the trays? Maybe they would want to know that. Well, you can get those at any garden supplier. I mean, I get them from the co-op. But there's, you know, probably any garden supply. So you can see the water, it's full of water. Now I'm going to drain this off. Over here. And I drain it off till it's almost down to a trickle. These hold, it's amazing, this little one sheet holds about two and a half gallons of water, three gallons of water. So once you've drained it down till there's hardly anything coming out, because you are going to add some water again after the seed. So there, we've hardly any there now. There's still a bit of weight though. I'm not going to go through the whole process of planting right now, but I planted this tree last night. You can see the pellets in here. You can see the arugula. I'm a little messy with my big fingers to get fit in there. You are messy. But, Look at that. But uh, they grow well. So these are the pelleted seeds yes. in there. You can see each seed per hole. So actually, so after I've seeded these trays, there's how much water goes back in. So I will put in a liter of water or, or quart of water in most cases. And I put one cap. One cap full of the essential or root conditioner. I'm just going to show them that. There's several different brands. And I mean, you, you buy what you can in your area. It's just a, I get this one. It's easy Here, to get. You so you can see this. It's just It just helps with the health of the roots. And basically, that's what I do. So that now, if I had the seed in there, I would just pour this over and that would be it. I would never water these trees again. No. So that's what you've done with this one, is you poured the yes, essential I over poured top. A, a liter in that last night. Of course, and I won't water that again at all. And what I'll do is then we put it up here on the heat mat. So this is the propagation station. Yes. 
So there's a heat mat under these trays. Yeah. So this is where could, they... I don't know if you could see this. This is a variety called Muir. Now, because there's a shortage this year, there's no pelleted available. So I had to plant this with raw seed. It takes a little bit of patience to plant every one, but I mean, it's well worth it. And you can see that two days. Look at the germination. And when I said I don't water them again, there's still quite a bit of water in here. But this is, and this is where a lot of people are having some problems. If you let this tray, this oasis sit here in stagnant water too long, you start getting very inconsistent germination. Some get leggy, some don't grow. You start getting some diseases in the roots. So as soon as I see that, any germination, sign of germination at all, there's enough germination there for me now. I will drain this water. Like I say, this is only two days. You see, out of a liter of water, I'm not getting very much out of there. But it's still wet. Oh, it's still, still lots wet. So I will drain this right off, best I can. And I want it really dry because now I'm going to try and remove this in one piece and put it into my big trays. So this is where it goes from the heat mat down to under the lights. And with the heat mat we always dome the trays as well until they're ready to come off. But any sign of germination, I would say in the 25 to 40 percent range, you get germinated, it's time to get them out of there. You get them out of there and you're going to start getting germination from here. Look at this and look at that. It's over here is just as beautiful. Good. So there are several different ways to get these out of here. If I just pop it up so I get it past the edge. You have to be gentle because yeah. the oasis is very, very... But I just slide it through. And there you go, out like that. <coughs> now this will run three times a day for 15 minutes. And that's all it needs. You can see the grooves on the bottom to help them drain. If they sit in the water, it's not good. You need, you know, you need oxygen. You, you need them to, you know, to, to dry out. You don't want these soft and wet. In about three days, these will be up. You can see here, these will be ready to put in my nurseries. Probably by the weekend. And that's the nursery trough. That's something else a lot of people ask asking. How do you know when it's time to change to transplant? Well, everybody's different, but what works for us, when I get something that's flush with the top, see this cilantro here, it's almost ready to transplant. Probably by Sunday we will do that. Only because we'll be at the market on Saturday, so we don't have time. But and look, at, look at the beautiful roots in the bottom of that. Nice and healthy. You know. So the lights. Yes. The lights are 12 inches above the tray, above the, the bottom of the, from the ground up. I've got the 12 inches. So from the tabletop to the, to the lights. They are a cool white fluorescent light. Uh, much better than I had. I had some blue lights under there before, but now I'm getting a lot more even germination. You know, we still have a lot of problems ourselves. You can see right here, one of my issues. That was old pelleted seed. When when they tell you that it's no good after a year, they're right. I uh, I tried to use it up and it just wasn't germinating. I eventually just threw the rest of them out. Uh, it doesn't pay, to, especially when it's pelleted seed, to keep them around. You got to get rid of them because they just uh, you know it's a lot of wasted foam. It's wasted space down uh, you know down as we go down the greenhouse. So. I mean, I hope that helps a few of you how we do it. And I, I, one thing I didn't mention, no fertilizer. Right. You just get no fertilizer till they get down to here. And that goes the through the system. Section, and even then it's only half strength. Okay. So, I mean, you can look down. Patty can scan down. You can see the growth we're getting now. You know, it's, uh, it's phenomenal. So this is the nursery. And then once they are ready to go they get put into the finishing troughs which are these ones so you can see it's beautiful beautiful stuff everything's starting to grow like I said we do need more uh, sunshine we did have sunshine for a while and uh, it really does help so this weekend will be sunshine so anything else you want to say no just uh, you know if you have any questions bring them forward we just realized here we have a beet top. We're growing. They're not supposed to give you beets, but 
Oh wow! I guess we're having beets for supper. Are they all doing that? No. Well, we don't. So know. these are the beet green variety that are just for the tops. So well, that's pretty cool. Yay! I love beets. Well, thanks, everybody. We'll talk to you next week. Here's the rest of it. Wow! Look at the basil. Beautiful.